God bless you on this Palm Sunday morning, 2021. I am the Reverend Dr. Betty J. Tom, and I am the pastor and servant leader of this great congregation, Old First Presbyterian Church. We are located in downtown Newark, New Jersey, 820 Broad Street, where we are transforming lives through the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Welcome back to worship with us, and we are so happy that you have decided to tune in again one more Sunday, particularly as we have been traveling this journey with Jesus uh, to Resurrection Sunday. And so God bless you. Let's give a shout out to Mr. Kevin Harris, who is our music director here at Old First Presbyterian Church, who opens up the service every Sunday with a powerful prelude that gets us ready for the preaching of the gospel. Can you all say good morning, Kevin? Good morning, Kevin. Good morning. Well, beloved, you will not be able to see it, but the candles are lit, symbolizing the presence of Jesus Christ with us and among us. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If you walk with me in the light, you will not walk in darkness. So thank God for the light of the world today. Well, beloved, again, this is Palm Sunday 2021, and it's also this entire month of March. We have been celebrating the gifts of women. This entire month of March, we have listened to and had videos and shared in our illustration some of the marvelous gifts that women, you, woman, me, woman, that we bring to our families, to our communities, to our churches, and yes, even to the world. And so the month of March will soon be over, but let's continue to celebrate all of the giftedness that women all over the world bring. God bless you, women. God bless you. Amen. Well, beloved, I want to invite you now to join me as we call our service to worship with our call to worship. Our call to worship can be found in Psalm 34, verses 1 through 3. Very familiar call to worship. Get your devices, open your Bibles, and read with me the call to worship, Psalm 34, verses 1 through 3. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Come and glorify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Amen, amen, our call to worship. Beloved, would you join me now as we go before the Lord in a word of prayer on this beautiful Palm Sunday morning, 2022. Let us pray. Eternal and gracious God, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we come again on this Palm Sunday as we celebrate with our Lord Jesus Christ and the crowds, his triumphant entry into the city of Jerusalem. Lord, we know as even as we celebrate today, we know that our cheers will turn to tears before this week is over. But even so, Lord, we thank you today for the opportunity to be in worship, to follow this road again today. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit will bless us in our time of worship today. And that when we are done today, may we say like the men on the road to Emmaus, did not our hearts burn. This is our prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for our sin. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Well, beloved, as is, as is our practice here at Old First Presbyterian Church, I want to invite you now to pass the peace and we're going to ask you to take a moment and let's just pass the peace. Amen. Good morning, Gold First Church. May the peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Thank you, Miss Peaceful Fox. Miss Peaceful Fox as she passed the peace with us today. Amen. Well, welcome again, Mrs. Mary L. Johnson, Mr. Andrew Darling. Welcome back. 
as we sing songs of praise and worship and hymns, and as you will lead us this morning in those songs of praise. And welcome back, Mrs. Cassandra Harris, as she will be reading our text today, found in Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. And my sermon title today is The Highest Road, The Highest Road. And so Andrew, Marielle, and Cassandra, would you now bless us with your gifts? Amen. Amen. Happy Sunday morning. Here we go. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name, precious name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name, precious name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of blood. Glory to his name. Today's scripture reading comes from Mark 11th chapter, verses 1 through 11, New International Version. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to. And the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father, David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Holy One who is the great I Am. And we will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. 
We will glorify the only one who is the great I am. He is the great, he is the great, he is the great I am. He is the great, he is the great, he is the great I am. Singing praises to the Father, singing praises to the Son. Trinity in one. He is the great, he is the great, he is the great I am. Oh, he is the great, he is the great, he is the great I am. Oh, he is the great, he is the great. He is the great I am. He is the great. He is the great. He is the great I am. Well, thank you, Andrew, and thank you, Marielle, and Mrs. Cassandra Harris, for those songs of praise and worship and for the reading of this powerful text this morning found in Mark chapter 11, verses one through 11. I would invite you now to join me for a prayer of illumination, and then we'll get right to the word that the Lord has given me for you today, the highest road. Would you pray with me? Let us pray. Eternal and gracious God, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, on this Palm Sunday 2021, as we look out on all of the events that are happening in our world today, both domestically and internationally, we understand that we know that we need a Savior. And so, Father God, walk with us through this text today. Open our eyes. Touch our hearts. Help us to see Jesus. And help us to understand that his destination has always been Calvary. This is our prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Beloved, can you say amen and amen. God bless you. The highest road. On March the 7th, 1965, some 56 years ago, approximately 600 civil rights activists, led by the then very young John Lewis, left Selma, Alabama, walking on U.S. Highway 80, headed east towards the Capitol. After they passed over the peak of the Edmund Pettus Bridge and left the boundaries of the city, they were confronted. They were confronted by the county sheriff deputies and state troopers who attacked them using tear gas, horses, dogs, billy clubs, and drove them back across the bridge. The then governor George Wallace had vowed that the march would not be permitted. John Lewis nearly died from the beating that he endured that Sunday. 17 other marchers were hospitalized and 50 more were treated for lesser injuries. Because of this brutal attack, this day became known in history as Bloody Sunday. The images of the marchers being beaten was covered by the national press and the television news outlets, both in the United States of America and internationally all over the world, people witness the beatings of Bloody Sunday. What was intended to be a peaceful protest 
for voting rights for the oppressed and disenfranchised African Americans and some poor whites of Salma, Alabama, turned into a bloody incident and for some almost death. The events of the march to Salma and Jesus' entrance into the holy city of Jerusalem have some parallels. Both began well and both ended in a bloody mess. Both were led by people with purpose and vision, driven by a mission from God. And both the march to Salma and Jesus' entry into Jerusalem stirred up the forces of evil against them. And they failed to stop God's ultimate plan and purpose. Those 600 people who marched to Salma and Jesus Christ who entered the holy city of Jerusalem took the high road, literally. The Edmund Pettus Bridge is 15 feet high, and the road from Bethphage to Jerusalem, although it is only one mile long, it is all the way uphill, some 2,700 feet above sea level. On this Palm Sunday, 2021, let's look again at God's highway. The road that Jesus traveled to Calvary was a high road, but it was not an easy road. From this text today, we see that the highest road, the highest road can be a road of cheers and celebrations. Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem is recorded in all four of the Gospels. This tells us, beloved, that this story of his entrance into the holy city is of utmost importance. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us today. And although each of the gospel writers tells the story from a different perspective, they all recorded that the event was a time of celebration. Large crowds followed Jesus. They came towards Jesus. And large crowds walked with Jesus, crying out and waving branches, taking off their coats and laying them on the road for the donkey to walk over. This was no quiet procession. Luke records that the people began to rejoice and praise God in a loud voice for all of the mighty works that they had seen. By this one act, Jesus was telling the crowd of the Jewish leaders, the Roman government, and his disciples, and all that witnessed it, that he was and is truly the king of all kings, and the Lord of all lords. Can you say amen? Amen. Listen to what the scripture says. The next day, the, cra the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. Then they took up palm branches and they went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna, save us now, Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. The high road is a road where the people celebrated even though they may not have understood completely what Jesus' purpose and mission was all about. They cried out in their hopes, in their fears, in their dreams, for a better way of life than the Romans had subjected them to. This mob, this mob, they held Jesus as king, the Messiah, the one who would deliver them from Roman oppression. This mob marching with Jesus included his own disciples. They had the right person, but they had the wrong mission. They never expected for their Messiah to die. 
And as I preached on last Sunday in my sermon, Destination Calvary, Jesus' destination from the time of his birth has always been Calvary. And although he told his disciples and all those who were with him at that time, at least three times in Matthew, in Mark, and in Luke, that he was going to die. He was going to be subjected to cruelty at the hands of the religious leaders and he would be put to death. And on the third day, he would rise again. Many were clueless concerning what would lie ahead. They were all caught up in the moment, in the frenzy of the party, of the celebration, of the hosannas, of the cheers. Much like what happened in Miami, Florida on this past week, like a swarm of locusts, the spring breakers descended upon Miami Beach and mayhem followed. But who doesn't love a good party, right? Hosanna, Hosanna. Save now, Lord, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. You remember in 2 Samuel how King David danced before the Lord on the road to Jerusalem? The scripture says, so David went to bring up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David, and he came with rejoicing. When those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fatted calf. And wearing the linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all of his might, while he and all of Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and with sounds of trumpets. They were approximately 10 miles from the city of Obed-Edom to Jerusalem, some 2,500 feet above sea level. But David and all of Israel didn't wait to get into the city before they started dancing. They danced and they shouted all the way into the city on this road the highest road. The highest road is a road of cheers and celebrations, shouts of joy, exclamations of Hosanna. And the highest road can also be a road of tears and sorrow. Jesus was treated like a rock star when he made his debut into the holy city of Jerusalem that day. But just one week later, the honored Jesus became the humiliated Jesus. This would be the last time he would enter on this road, this road carrying him to his death. This high road, this road of cheers was also a road of tears. Look at me again, look again with me at the great care that Jesus took in making preparation for his entrance into Jerusalem. The scripture says that when they were approaching Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage and Bethany on the slopes of the Mount of Olives. And he sent off two of his disciples with these instructions. Go into the village just ahead of you, and as soon as you enter it, you will find a tethered coat on which no one has yet ridden. Untie it and bring it here to me. And if anybody asks you, why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it and will send it back immediately. So they went off and found the coat tethered by the doorway outside of the open street and they untied it. And some of the bystanders said, what are you doing untying this coat? But they said the reply that Jesus had told them to make. He said, the Lord needs it. And the men raised no objections. 
The scripture says Jesus got on the young donkey. He sat on it and he fulfilled the prophecy of Zechariah 9 and 9. Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king is coming, righteous and victorious, lowly, riding on a donkey, on a coat, the foal of a donkey. Beloved, do you see what I see? That Jesus' words are exact. And he and, and the disciples followed his words, his instructions to the T. God will give us divine instructions. And when God does, if we do exactly what the Lord says and follow his directions, what a blessing that will follow. The scripture says obedience is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Amen. Amen. This is the road that will lead to tears because it is politically charged and it is a somewhat subversive move on Jesus's part. All throughout the Gospel of Mark, Jesus told his disciples and others to keep the messianic secret. Do not tell anybody who I am. But on this Palm Sunday, we again rejoice at this very public move that Jesus makes. Jesus came riding into the holy city on a donkey, the coat of a donkey. Jesus didn't even even borrow a used donkey, but he rode on one that had never been broken in, that had never been ridden, symbolizing his kingship, telling everyone his identity. Kings don't ride on beasts of burden. Kings ride in chariots drawn by pompous steeds, all decorated with fine jewelry and fine materials. And yet the people in the crowd, they called Jesus King. They cried out, Hosanna, Lord, save us. Without saying a word, Jesus lampooned the powers that be and all of their pretensions. Jesus did not come with pomp and circumstance, but he came as one who identified with the poor, the lowly, the humble. In that day, Jesus entered the city as one who was vulnerable. The book of Revelations chapter 19 says that when Jesus comes back again, he will not come riding on a donkey. He will not come as one who is vulnerable, but he will come riding on a white horse and he will come as a mighty warrior. Can you say amen? Revelation 19 says, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon it was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he will judge and he will make war. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh the name written King of all kings and Lord of all lords. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Beloved, our King on this Palm Sunday came in as a lowly servant. He came in riding on a donkey. But one day the scripture says he will come back as a mighty warrior. Amen. I know you've heard of the Trail of Tears. It's usually taught in our history books, probably not in as much detail as it should be. But the Trail of Tears was a forced relocation of over 100,000 Native Americans within the United States of America. It followed the Indian Removal Act of 1830. The removal included Native Americans from the tribes of the Cherokee, the Seminole, the Chickasaw, 
and the Choctaw nations, particularly those who chose not to assimilate with the American society. They were forced to move from their ancestral homes or ancestral lands in the southeastern part of the United States of America. They were forced and driven to an area west of the Mississippi River, which was designated as Indian Territory. We know them today as reservations. Many Native American Indians suffered. They suffered on that trail of tears. They suffered from exposure, from disease, from starvation while walking over 5,000 miles through nine states between 2,000 and 6,000 Native Americans, particularly Cherokee Indians died on that trail of tears. Perhaps some of you on the road to life you have experienced the cheers and the tears, a painful divorce, the death of a child or a loved one, the loss of a job that you loved and valued, the pain of separation, the loneliness that we've experienced in the last year and continues to experience during this COVID-19 pandemic. You know what it means to be on the road, the road that leads to cheers and to tears. Some of you know that a high road can be a road of pain. It can be a road of tears. It can be a road of suffering. But thanks be to God on this Palm Sunday 2021, the highest road is also a road of salvation and a road of victory. Amen. Amen. This Palm Sunday, we will travel a difficult road with Christ. We will hear the hosannas. We will hear the cheers. We will see the palm branches waving. But it will be a difficult week. We will watch Jesus as he slips into the temple on that Sunday evening, this Palm Sunday evening. Luke says he watched, and Mark says he watched the goings on. But because it was late, he left there and he went back to Bethany where he stayed the night. We will see Jesus return to the temple on Monday morning and clear out the temple with holy passion and righteous anger at the money changers. He said to them, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. On Tuesday, we will, we will travel with Jesus as he goes to the Mount of Olives with his disciples. And there our Lord will speak about the end times, about his second advent, and the final judgment. On Holy, Tuesday, on Holy Wednesday, Jesus will rest with his disciples in Bethany, the home of his friends Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. But on Monday, Thursday, we will follow Jesus to the upper room where he will celebrate the Last Supper with his disciples. He will serve them bread and wine, symbolizing his body, his blood, and he will wash their feet, symbolizing the humble servant. And later that night, we will walk with Christ through the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus will pray in such agony that his sweat will become like great drops of blood dropping to the ground while his disciples slept. We will follow, but we will hang our heads as Judas will betray our Lord with a kiss. The soldiers will arrest Jesus and we will follow him as he is marched from judgment hall to judgment hall. As he is mocked, as he is scorned, as he is spit upon, as a crown of thorns are placed upon his head 
as Peter denies even knowing Christ. We will follow. And we will travel to Good Friday. And we will see Jesus as he is on the Villa Della De Rosa, the way of sorrow, with Jesus carrying his own cross. We'll watch as he's nailed to the cross and we will hear Jesus speak those seven last words. And finally, his head will drop in the lock of his arms and he will die for the sin of the world. Beloved, the highest road is a road of cheers, but it will turn to a sorrowful road of tears. But wait, the road does not end there. On next Sunday morning, we will come back together again and we will walk a new road a new and living way, a higher road will be revealed. And ultimately, if we stay the course, this high road, this road will lead us to salvation and to victory. Amen. Can you say amen? Beloved, one of the most profound things about Palm Sunday and this journey of Christ's passion this week. On Palm Sunday, Jesus revealed his identity as the Son of the living God, as the Lord of all lords and the King of all kings, as the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, as the light of the world, it was a reveal, it was a reveal party. And then he took the trip to Good Friday. And the most profound thing about it is that he knew he was going to die and he went anyway. He went for you and he went for me. Amen, amen. The road across the Edmund Pettus Bridge represented one of the political and emotional peaks of the modern civil rights movement. Two days after that first march on March the 9th, 1965, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. led a symbolic march over that same bridge. By then, local activists and citizens and residents had all joined in by the hundreds, hundreds of people, multiracial, multiethnic, and intergenerational protested from all across the country. They marched across that bridge. The road to Selma, from Selma to um, uh, Montgomery is now on the National Historic Trails. And on March the 7th, 2015, marking the 50th anniversary of that very first march, then President Obama, he spoke from the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And the crowd sang, God will take care of you. Today, there is a movement going on to rename that bridge after the late civil rights activist, that great icon, Mr. Congressman John Lewis, who died last, last July, July the 17th, 2020. Beloved, this is the time. Jesus said last week, my hour has come for the son of man to be glorified. Don't stop now. Let's go all the way with Jesus. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Well, beloved, God bless you. God bless you. And I pray that your hearts were touched and enlightened and lifted up as we preach the sermon today, The Highest Road. Amen.
I want to speak to those of you who are out there this morning who have never made the decision to make Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. All of these Palm Sunday celebrations and the Passion Week and Good Friday, all of this stuff probably makes no sense at all to you. Beloved, I want you to know that Jesus did all of this. He endured the suffering. He endured the execution at the cross, on the cross for you. If you're out there and you don't, ne you don't know Christ, you've never in your life asked Christ to come into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, then I want to invite you to do that now. Don't leave this broadcast without making Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. It's very simple. The scripture says in Romans, if you will believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, all the things that you've heard and listened, preached about Christ, about his kingship, about him coming as a baby, about him living and walking among us, about him, his miracles, and ultimately dying at Calvary for us, for you. If you can believe that by faith and receive it, the scripture says that you are saved. I pray that you will do that on this Palm Sunday, 2021. And when you do, reach out to us in our social format, call us at the church, let us know that you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior on Palm Sunday, 2021, so that we may journey with you on your newfound walk of faith. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Well, beloved, I want to uh, say what we believe. I want our confession, uh, our confession of faith, which is found uh, one of them, our Apostles' Creed. And I'm going to read it right out of our, our hymnal. Uh, and I ask that you would join me in reciting today what we believe, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Universal Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. That's our Apostles' Creed. That's what we believe. Amen. Praise God. And now, beloved, I take a moment to lift up prayers with you um, as we pray, continue to pray for one another, as we continue to pray for all of the calamities that we are experiencing in our world, uh, the attacks on the Asian American community uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, the, the, the massacre that happened in Colorado at the supermarket, the killing of those 10 individuals, uh, continuing with the rollout of this um, COVID vaccine, continuing to look at the numbers of COVID infections that are going up in hospital um, admissions, all of these things. And I haven't even touched on the things that are going on in our lives individually and personally. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter because we serve a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything we can ask, think, or imagine. We serve a God who is so exact that he told his disciples exactly where to go find that coat and how to get it and bring it back to him. Whose words are true, who is faithful. And so, beloved, let us lift up all of these prayers and concerns, these weighty matters, even the smallest thing God is concerned about us. Let's lift those up to him right now. Let's lift those up to heaven. And let's pray, saying the Lord's Prayer together. 
our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen, beloved. God hears. God still hears. And God still answers prayers. Well, I have two quick announcements for you this afternoon. I want to invite you to coffee hour immediately after this service is over. From 1230 to 130, Old First Church will be in coffee hour on this Palm Sunday. And so let's come together. Let's celebrate. Let's cheer. Let us say, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord as we gather in coffee hour from 12.30 to 1.30. And then elders, we are having a called session meeting immediately after the coffee hour. We have one item of business that we must take care of. And so elders, you have received this information. And so you, I invite you to be on the call uh, at coffee hour and just remain on and we will take care of uh, this business in a call session meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much for your cooperation. God bless you. I want to say a heartfelt thank you, thank you, thank you to all of those of you who volunteered uh, to assist with our grab and go feeding a program, which happens the last Thursday of every month from 1230 to 3. We open the doors and we uh, uh, distribute to our community of Newark and beyond uh, bags of food, fresh vegetables, canned goods, and yes, even meat to those who come into, into our church who, from our community. They receive um, wonderful bags of food, and we are so blessed to be able to do that. But it would be impossible to have this grab and go without the many, many hands of many of of our volunteers who came on this week. Reverend Phil Tom, uh, Miss Acosia Abroqua, she was there, rode the bus in to help us uh, uh, on, on uh, Thursday. Fr uh, uh, Deacon Francois Ecambi, Deacon uh, Stanley Fredericks, uh, Brother uh, Elder Arnold Fredericks, Mr. George Smith was there helping, Deacon Ava Noble and Deacon Clifford Bangaroo, they were all there helping with us on Thursday. And also I want to give just a wonderful shout out to the Ministry of Interfaith Outreach, Bishop Ronald Jones. He sent some of his wonderful women over there, about four or five of his women leaders over there. And I tell you, they stayed with us all day and they helped to, to package up bags and to help distribute few food. The Reverend Jerry Lee from Outrageous uh, Outreach was there with us all day. And then, of course, our own awesome building superintendent, Mr. Uh, Julio Romero. Um, we could not have done this feeding this month without the many hands of you volunteers. So if you have not yet volunteered, please give me a call on this week and volunteer for the next Grab and Go, which will be April the 29th, Thursday, April the 29th. From 12 to 3, we will serve and distribute those bags again. But we need a lot of help on Wednesday and Thursday morning preparing those bags and getting them ready. So God bless you. Would you please set aside some time on Thursday, uh, Wednesday evening or Thursday morning or even Thursday afternoon to volunteer for Old First Presbyterian Church feeding program, Grab and Go. God bless you. I look forward to hearing from you. And then finally, on this week, the Passion Week of Christ, I want to invite you to a Monday Thursday service, a joint Monday Thursday service with three or four of our sister churches. And then Old First Church, we will have our Good Friday Tenebrae service on Friday night at 7. All of this information is waiting on you in your weekly announcements. Please, please read your weekly announcements and govern yourselves accordingly. God bless you. Thank you. 
and now our benediction. Beloved, and so we begin. We begin this week. We begin this week as Jesus travels this high road, this road of cheers, this road that will eventually lead to sorrow and tears, but will also lead to victory and salvation. We pray that you will continue to travel with us. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. If you have enjoyed these services and this service today, we ask that you would subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring the bell and become a subscriber so that you can continue to get these worship services. And also join us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'd love for you to be involved in all of our social media outlets. God bless you, beloved, and we'll see you in worship on this week, the Passion Week of Christ. And now I turn you back over to Mr. Kevin Harris, who will give you the postlude. Amen. Amen.